friends, Natalie here for Cherry on Top, and today we are gonna do Mixed Media Mix Up Volume 5. We're gonna do a color wash background. So this is what you see a lot of times people call the packaging technique. I'm gonna show you five different ways to do this. And so I already have some white cardstock here, and it's gessoed with that clear gesso. You can also use white. Um, and the first technique we're going to start with is the packaging technique. So I just have a piece of like acrylic packaging from like a sticker sheet and I'm spraying my um, watercolor spray directly onto the packaging and I'm kind of like mixing it around and then I drop it onto my page and I use the plastic to pick up the color and move it around. Um, I, I can change the shape of it. Um, the gesso is what allows me to do that because the color is not directly soaking into the paper just yet because of the gesso. So now I'm using my brush and some water to manipulate the color. I'm kind of moving it around in the same um, pattern that the uh, packaging technique already gave me. And then I'm rolling over it with paper towels. If you roll the entire roll over the color swatch, it will not change the shape of the color. So now I'm gonna apply another color. And so basically, um, if you don't want the colors to blend, then it's a good idea to wait for the first color to dry before you apply the second color. If you don't mind them blending, you can do it while it's still wet. But because I rolled over it with the paper towels, it was pretty much already dry. Um, and then, um, you know, when you apply water and gesso to a page, it will make it buckle up. And so sometimes the divots in the paper will pull color um, and kind of allow for different shades of that color. So now we're going to do what I call the reverse packaging technique. So I take a piece of acrylic and I'm using the cover of my Cricut map. And I'm gonna apply the color to that plastic and then I will press my paper onto it. Um, I added a little bit of water there, that's not necessary. But I'm gonna smush it down and if I flip it, I can see what I'm doing. Um, and so I can move those bubbles of color around. When you lift the paper, it will pull in the last area of contact in which the paper and the plastic touched. But that is what gives it this gorgeous modeled um, different uh, vibrancies of the colors and so if you look I really think that's gorgeous so I really enjoy this technique it is very similar to the gel press technique which is number three and what I'm doing here is I'm applying the watercolor sprays directly to my gel press and I also do add a little bit of water I don't use a brayer, which is typically something you do use on a gel press with acrylic paint, but with the watercolor, it won't really help anything. It would blend the colors together, but because they're so wet, it wouldn't do much else. So I just spray it, put the paper on, and kind of spread it out. It's, see, it's similar to the reverse packaging technique, except I don't flip the gel press over. I mean, I guess I could, but, um, and there was still color on there, so I had to do a second pull. And I like how it blended those colors together really beautifully. And it gives um, interesting texture. It gives really interesting kind of bubbles and stuff in there. And the fourth technique is going to be using a stamping block. This technique I like because it gives you a lot of control. So you just dip your stamping block into color and then you smush it around your page. <laughs> and um, you can kind of like move the color around so that you don't have the edge of your stamping block showing it's like a like a square pattern my stamping block is a square um but yeah see how simple that was so easy and you can also apply the color directly onto your stamping block so you're really not making very much of a mess the last color technique is going to be um the swirl technique so i went ahead and applied water to my paper and now i'm applying my watercolor spray and then I'm applying additional water to make it where the color will swirl around the page as I move the paper. You have to have quite a bit of water, so you definitely need to ensure that you've gessoed your paper for this technique. So you add a lot of water and you just swirl it around into a beautiful organic shape. I do want these colors to blend, so I don't make sure that the first one dries before I apply the second color. 
Again, I applied plain water to the paper before I applied the color. And now I'm just swirling it around. I'm letting the two colors mix there in the middle. And I also guide it with my paintbrush. I, I wipe up excess ink and um, drips that I'm not exactly looking for in my design. Because um, the paper is buckled, due to the gesso and I didn't apply my gesso very smoothly so there is pooling but I, I don't mind that it, it allows for some of the color to be more saturated um, it the application of your gesso will make a difference um, when doing the color wash technique so um, if you want to try for a really smooth application you won't have a lot of texture so there, that is the packaging technique, just a close up of how it looks. I like how modeled it is. I did add a few splatters in there. This is the reverse packaging technique and I did not splatter that. All that color is just the pooling that happened when I pulled it off of the plastic and it gives like this very soft pastel look and I like that. And that's the gel press. Also gave a pastel look with the pooling. Um, because I did three colors, it does look different though because they mixed. And this is the second pull from the gel press. And it's just a lighter, less vibrant pull because it had already used the pigment on the first page. This is the stamping block technique. Again, it gives you those pretty pastel uh, blobs of color as well. And then this is the swirling technique. Um, those hard lines dried that way because of the pooling in the middle of the page because I didn't apply my gesso smoothly and um, the paper was warped. So those are the looks and here they are up close and then they're also over on the Cherry on Top blog, very detailed blog post um, walking you through it all. So let me know if you have any questions down below. Now we're going to apply this process to an actual layout. So I uh, used this cut file, I think it came from Paper Issues, and um, I cut it out in black, and I've got a white background, and I'm going to back this with this gorgeous Fifth and Monaco collection from Pink Paisley, and I want this bold floral to show through, and I'm gonna use those colors from the paper to make my background. So I've backed the cut file now, and that's where it's going to go and I'm going to put that photo over there so I want to make the background behind the photo. I've already applied clear gesso to my page. You can see it's a little warpy and when I put these in page protectors in a heavy album they flatten out so it's not a problem. So I'm going to use the stamping block technique because this technique applies um, allows for a lot of control and I know that I want to kind of mimic the florals and I want to have swatches of green as leaves and then go back in with some pink so I'm definitely going to allow all my green to dry first um, so I'm using three different colors and I'm just kind of I, I apply them to my block and then I smush my block down on the page and I just move it around and moving it around you can see through the block I like that a lot too that's another reason that it gives you a lot of control because you can see what it looks like once you move it on your page and if you don't like it you can move it around move the color around get get it pulled in a different direction if you um, want it to look different so I've applied three different colors of green as kind of leaves and now I'm going to go back through with um, my brush and I'm going to soften out the edges and just kind of blend and I actually go through and add a little more green color um, as well. I wanted it to be really vibrant and rich. Um, a lot of times with the color washes you'll get a very pastel look because you add additional water to your pigment to your watercolor or your stamping ink or whatever you chose to use as your color um, so layering that up and adding additional layers of the watercolor will allow for a more vibrant look so I'm adding my cut file back on top just to make sure how of how it's looking and now where I want to apply my pink color so I'm using um, a water a pink watercolor and I'm just applying it directly on my block so there you can see I used it two different ways I applied it to my mat and dipped my block in it or I applied the color directly to my block so I'm smearing around this one pink color and then I'm gonna go in with a spray on top of the block as well and kind of mix those two together and I'm applying more pink than I applied of the green and you can see that it kind of dripped on there so um, 
I want to go in and smush down the drips. And I'll add splatters in later, but the drips were not exactly the same look as a splatter that I would go for. Now I'm just using my paintbrush and some water to kind of soften up the color, soften up the hard lines that maybe um, happen if I picked up the edge of the block and you got a straight line like the edge of the square block. I don't want that. But the depth of color, you know, how some is applied more lightly than others, that's what um, makes the these kind of backgrounds really beautiful. So you definitely don't want just all one solid color in the background, otherwise you're just going to use a solid piece of cardstock. Um, so moving it around under the block or the piece of plastic is what gives you that color depth. So I'm really loving how this is looking. I'm going to go through and I'm going to add splatters. You can check out Mixed Media Mix Up Volume 1 for all the splatter techniques as, as well as stripe applying te techniques if you want the super basics. I would say that using the stamping block is probably the easiest way to do a color wash. Um, if you are a beginner and you're timid about it, I would say start with that one for sure. Personally, I don't love the packaging technique. I don't feel like I have a lot of control. I do a lot of the swirl technique. If you watch my channel, you'll see that. Um, but I'm actually really loving the stamping block technique. You might see that a lot more for me. I've done it before, not a ton, but I love the control that it gave me here um, over this background. And I'm really loving how it's turning out. Even with the splatters, um, it is key to do layers. Um, so you saw me do some splatters, I rolled over them, and now I'm gonna do another layer of splatters. I am also using texture cardstock, which will give you kind of a different look with your background. A lot of people use smooth, but I like how the colors get in the groups of the textured cardstock. So I trimmed down my white paper so that I can use the this Fifth and Monaco frond paper with the black, um, and I'm roughing up the edges, I sewed around, and I just love how the black gives a pop with the black that I used in the cut file and I'm actually going to embellish with a lot of black. We got a lot going on with the florals um, that I used to back that cut file and I wanted that to be the star for sure. So we have the pastel background, the photo is simple, we don't need a lot of embellishments. So I just do a, fl a few black palm fronts that I cut out with my Sizzix, with a Sizzix die. And then um, I'm just going to grab a few things from my stash. I have a couple of these enamel dots. Um, oh, I did go back through and add some black splatters to just kind of tie in with the black. Um, I also add some Nouveau dots later, some black crystal Nouveau dots, which are super fun. Kind of getting obsessed with getting some Nouveau. So I adhere down those little pieces of flare and the palm fronds. And then I find these Illustrated Faith little cardstock stickers and they just say love because um, we love vacation, that's for sure. <laughs> just add a couple of little embellishments. Like I said, I like the background, I like the paper, I want them to shine, so it doesn't need much more. If you guys have any questions about Mixed Media Mix Up Volume 5, please leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer. You need to check out the blog, I'll link that down below, and we'll also have a thread in our message board going and I would love to see what you make. So if you make something using this tutorial, please tag me and um, post it over there on our message board. I can't wait to see what you all make. Thanks for watching y'all. Bye.